NAERLS present Agri Panorama. In today's edition of the program, we shall be discussing on hydroponic technology. What is hydroponic technology? What are the advantages of hydroponic technology? How much do we need to own hydroponic technology? And who can adopt the technology? We shall find out this and more in a moment. Please stay tuned. Hello listener, you are welcome to the program. Agri Panorama brought to you by the National Agricultural Extension and Research License Services, NAERLS Zaria. Hydroponic technology is a new way of farming innovation, which is soilless farming and it is also not dependent on rain. For details about the new farming technology, here with me in the studio is Mr. Samuel Umbuaga Muchai from Grandua Africa Limited, Nairobi, Kenya, who is on working visit to NAELS Ahmad Bello University, Zaria. What is hydroponic technology? Hydroponic, a word uh, coined from two words, hydro and ponics. So the hydro part means water and ponics means working from Greek derivations. So what I will say in hydroponics, we do not use soil. So we use water as the main medium of feeding our plants. And that means uh, our, our water has to be injected with nutrients that will have otherwise been gotten from the soil. But the reason we avoid in soil is because one, the quality of our soil is uh, reducing. And number two, the, the shrinking land size available for everyone. What is the advantages of hydroponic technology? In hydroponic technology or soilless farming, one, you make maximum use of small spaces. That means, uh, for example, in conventional farming, where you are told you have to space your crops two square feet, three square feet, depending on what you're planning, you're planting. In hydroponics, there is no much spacing required because the plants do not compete for nutrients. The nutrients are available and they are recycled. So the first advantage is that you can make use of very small spaces because there is less need for spacing. However, doesn't mean that we cut uh, corners in terms of phototropism where some plants may require uh, more light than others. So it has to be taken care of. Number two advantage is that because you're not using soil, you reduce pest and disease control by 80%. And uh, that one is something that we have done. Using just a mixture of molasses, garlic, we have managed to control things like white flies, aphids, thrips. And it is because soil is also, as much as it is a reservoir of nutrients, it's also a reservoir of pests and diseases. So avoiding it uh, reduces the pests and diseases uh, control. Number three advantage is that you use minimal water. For example, if you're growing your fodder for your livestock hydroponically, one liter of water is required to give 1.2 kg of the fodder. But if it was the conventional way of farming your fodder for your livestock using the soil 80 to 90 liters of water is required just to raise one kg of fodder and it is because once the water gets into the soil it percolates down and it's impossible to tap the water but in hydroponics we are able to recycle the water number four advantages is uh, we are able to recycle the water and hence recycle the nutrients. So there is a cut in cost of fertilizer and nutrients 
because there is that recycling. So you use very less nutrients and even the nutrients that you use, you're always recycling. Number five is the plant can grow to its maximum genetic ability because it has all the nutrients it requires and it has the best conditions and there is no competition among the plants. So the plant has no option but to grow. Those are some of the major advantages. In the course of your explanation, yeah. you mentioned that the technology is soilless yeah. and it doesn't need any nutrients because yes. the water contains a certain nutrients yes. on it. Yeah. Then what type of nutrients do we need to inject into the water? Okay, uh, in a simpler language, uh, nutrients are divided into two. They are the major ones, which are called macronutrients, and they are the minor ones that are not required in a, in a larger scale, which are called micronutrients. So the nutrient that you feed into these plants has to be balanced. It has to have the right percentage of macro and micronutrients. So we are saying when making this uh, nutrient, there has to be someone who has a good background of chemistry. As a biochemist by profession, I can tell you that uh, there is no shortcut. Otherwise, uh, you will make a nutrient that is not uh, safe for the crops and also for the end user who will uh, eat the produce. So there also needs a lot of regulation to avoid uh, people uh, going for business instead of bio, bio safety too. What kind of structure do we need for hydroponic technology? Now, the kind of structure in Africa, because we should offer uh, African solutions to African problems. If you look at what people are doing outside there, in Australia, in other continents, uh, in America, in Asia, people uh, do the structures depending on the climatic conditions they are in and depending on the problems and the situation they have. But in Africa, most of the, throughout the year, we have dry conditions, high temperatures. Sometimes we are in, uh, some countries are within the Sahara area, sub-Saharan region. So you have to focus on that. And what we are, we are supposed to do for these structures mm. is to have a structure that can lower the temperatures in, an, in a very simple way. So how we do that is incorporate use of shed nets. Shed nets are nets that uh, have been used even for car parking lots. They use shed nets. But now the percentage of the shed net, or in simpler terms, the size of the holes in those nets is the one that matters. If you are in a hot area, you need a net that has bigger holes to ensure that there is enough circulation of air within your structure. Uh, about the top, this, the net is used on the sides. The top of the structure you may cover with normal uh, zinc or uh, iron sheets as we call them in East Africa and uh, or you may use a clear polythene if you are growing vegetables that require a lot of light so that you increase the surface area of lighting on the roof you can adjust you can either use transparent material or opaque material that is how we construct our units and they don't differ much it's only that the sides is always shed net so the 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 the, the net is the one that will vary while well, also the roof will vary depending on what you're doing. For example, the tomato will require a roof that is transparent, that allows light in. The fodder does not require light from the top because it's just germination. So uh, in that case, you're, you just require water, warmth and oxygen or air. So it is uh, just sticking to the basics doing simple structures with locally available materials so that you do not again 
have a, a very high cost of setting up the structures. What is the cost of establishing a hydroponic technology? Okay, the cost of establishing a hydroponic technology, of course, will differ on the size of the unit and the expected output on the farmer. But just to give a general range of the cost, for example, if a farmer has 10 cows, and I'm using 10 cows because it's a round number. If a farmer has 10 cows and he wants to have hydroponic fodder that grows in 7 or 8 days maximum, and uh, he wants to ensure that he has fodder every day, he needs just 230 US dollars to have all the materials that are required for production of the fodder. In this case, just to act as a protein supplement. Now, if you're doing tomatoes, for example, in a structure that measures 5 meters by 3 meters, and the height is 3 meters, and you want to put all that infrastructure for watering the crops, hydroponically feeding the plants and everything, you need a minimum of 500 US dollars. Now, the, 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 the cost might be high initially. 500 US dollars in 500. Niger, equivalent to Nigerian Naira should be maybe like... Um, By 315, mm. that's around, uh, it's 150 about, something. Yeah, about 150 something thousand Naira. Yeah, okay. 150 something Naira. But even if that is the case, once you finish setting up, you do not set up again. That initial cost includes your labor, includes uh, the cost of the materials, includes the cost of the seeds or the seedlings in this uh, case, includes all those costs. And uh, we know, for example, uh, uh, one tomato plant can yield a minimum of 20 kgs per season. Mm. A season might be 7 to 12 months, but e even during those 7 months of harvesting, if you are harvesting 20 kgs from each plant and each and uh, the plants that are fitting in this 5 meter by 3 are 80 to 100 plants then that means you can do your mathematics and see how long it will take you to break even after you get your money back you can always count to have just new seedlings but the system is intact that is about the cost. Okay. Yeah. How does hydroponic technology works? How it works is very simple. We said hydro, uh, that is water, and ponics, that is working. So we are just working with water. Now, the soil is a reservoir of nutrients, and it also helps to hold the roots of the plant's family. So it provides support. But if we are replacing the soil, then that means we have to hold our roots with something. For example, if you are doing tomatoes or you are doing vegetables such as uh, spinach and lettuce and kales, you need containers that you can use rocks, you can use clay pebbles or any material that does not react with the nutrient solution that you will make. But the safest is the clay pebbles that are normally uh, available in the market. It's only that uh, we have not uh, attempted to uh, ask whether they're in the market, but they are available in the market. Yeah. Uh, we can get the clay pebbles, we can get the volcanic rock, which is available. As we are speaking here in Zaria, have a bag of uh, volcanic rock, the pumice, that uh, people use to, to scrub their feet well while bathing. If that is not available, uh, we have seen people using ballast or any rock that does not react. So that, that ensures that you hold the roots of the plants. But now when you're watering the plants, the water will always be mixed with the nutrient to ensure that the plants get food and you have uh, good uh, crops. But I would like to say, if you are doing livestock feeds, and this in this case is hydroponic fodder, 
you do not want to use chemicals. It is, it is germination, as I said earlier, so you need water, warmth, and oxygen only. So I think the major requirement there being a warm continent and having a lot of oxygen and air, we just need water, as simple as that. We do not want to complicate things that are easy. Yeah, so how it works is that simple. You just have your containers to hold the material, the media that will hold your roots, and you make sure that the water that you feed to the plants has nutrients and create a system that can help harvest this water so that you can always recycle it. Being that the technology is um, soilless, yes. doesn't it have any health effects? Uh, in terms of health effects, I will say it is about biosafety right from the seed to the seedling stage. For example, uh, there has been debates about genetically modified organisms or plants. Now, there are those that are improved. Uh, for example, tissue culture bananas. They have a better yield than the local bananas. And it's just tissue culture, which is different from genetically modified organism. But if you create a genetically modified organism and you do not do it in the right scientific way without checking the biosafety of the produce, uh, it means that we will have issues of cancer and all these things that are happening nowadays. Mm. So that extends even to plants that are being grown in greenhouses or tunnels as we as we know them, where people are using a lot of chemicals on the on the plants, a lot of pesticides, insecticides. In turn, these things will affect us in the long run. So even in hydroponics, it has that uh, aspect where you're using a nutrient solution made up of chemical compounds, just like the fertilizer we buy from the agri ag uh, agrovets in East Africa, we call them agrovets or farm produce stores. So yeah, we call it agro dealers. Agro dealers, mm. exactly. So the, the, the fertilizer you buy is made from chemical compounds. It is diammonium phosphate. That's a chemical compound. But the fertilizers have been made under strict regulation, under strict uh, measures to ensure that they are safe on our soils and in the long run to us. So even in hydroponic nutrients, we need an expert to make the solution. It's not just a, any Tom, Dick and Harry to wake up and start making nutrients. It will have its own effects. Which means farmer cannot ordinarily go to market and just obtain a seed to start establishing, I mean, to plant in the technology. You can get the seed, doesn't matter. You can get the seed the issue is the nutrient. Okay. We know garbage in, garbage okay. out. So if you if you use a nutrient that has be has not been balanced, there are things that we call radicals or chemical ions. So once you ingest this this uh, this this food that has these bad chemicals, those, the, the chances that those chemicals will remain in your body and do you harm is high. So we are talking about checking from the seed all the way, all the way to the whole value chain. Even the person, you might have very good produce, but the person processing the juice, the person processing all these uh, foods may not be hygiene uh, may not handle the, the, the produce hygienically. Yeah. So what we are saying is farmers are able to adopt the technology, but they should not fear that they will, they will be harmed just because it is. Then who can adopt the technology? Mostly what we have seen is everyone can adopt uh, this technology. Everyone qualifies. Because as long as you eat food, that means you're a stakeholder 
in agriculture. So everyone is, everyone qualifies to adopt, but the most people who appreciate use of hydroponics are people with less space for farming. People living in the urban areas, maybe someone has just a balcony or a kitchen garden, a very small one, and they need to farm. In hydroponics, we don't farm only horizontally, we farm vertically. You can have things growing on pipes, you can, because you're not using soil, you can farm vertically. You can have uh, things uh, growing on rafts and you have shelves or on, on, the, on, on uh, you have rafts on those shelves. So anyone can adopt, but the most people who are adopting hydroponics faster are people living in urban areas or people who just do not have enough land and are trying to just increase the production of the space they have. But there are also people who have a lot of land, but they are frustrated by the production they are getting from the soils because you invest a lot of uh, fertilizer, uh, most of our agriculture is rain-fed. Even if it is irrigation, there is a lot of wastage of water. So you find even these people with large farms, they like to do it in uh, the hydroponics way. For example, with a 15 meter by 8 meter space, you can have 9,000 strawberry plants. If you are doing it conventionally just on the soil, I don't think even uh, you will get to half of that, which is 4,400, you cannot near that. So hydroponics gives you uh, the ability to farm vertically because you do not depend on the soil. What are the challenges in adopting the technology, hydroponic technology? Mm. The challenges is uh, first, as a new, new in quotes, technology, uh, most farmers do not have enough information. So you find uh, we, we have to continually uh, demystify some myths that people have read maybe on the internet and things that they may think, for example, about the biosafety and everything. So those are the challenges. Adoption of the technology uh, is catching up, is good, but we would like their pace to be faster. So that is one challenge. Number two challenge is the initial cost. It's quite high if you compare to someone who has land and all they needed maybe was just to add manure uh, as they plant and they wait for the rain and it grows. But again, cheap is expensive. And if you want to increase your production, for example, the 15 by 8 space to give you 9,000 plants. There's a cost to it. So the initial cost is is a challenge. Number three is sometimes you need to translate some scientific technicalities. For example, the water we are using has to have the correct pH, in other words, the best acidity and alkalinity the strength of the solution, those values have to be translated. The, 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 the are measurements you take and you're supposed to translate them. So there is the learning that has to be done. And you find for those people who are not patient enough, they do not get to witness the fruits of their labor with this technology. And I think the, the last challenge is you find uh, farmers do not have the just simple uh, business skills to to know that sometimes you you just have to pay the cost once and thereafter just cease from working hard and you start working smart so it's a it, it's a challenge in in itself because uh, you may tell a farmer you need 500 and 500 US dollars to have a hundred plants of tomatoes and thereafter you just you just deal with seedlings and water but 
they may they they may rubbish that and say I can as well just do my little uh, farming with the soil but th that is the main challenge but slowly we are managing to convince them do you have any recommendations for overcoming the challenges yeah my recommendation is uh, first uh, we just need uh, to continue sensitizing and uh, if you hear about such a session uh, just spread the word tell people there is a new way new in quotes because it's been there people like israel people living in the desert who do not have good soils have been doing hydroponics for a long time so i think how to address the challenge of adopting is to keep spreading the word uh, let's uh, embrace the technology let's not fear uh, about uh, the safety number two the initial cost we can manage to adopt it slowly so if uh, we are saying this unit needs 500 us dollars you or the 150000 naira we do not have to spend all that money at once you start the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step you can start with ten dollars start with the little that you have just start and keep moving and uh, i think about the technicality of it is we just need to learn get out of your comfort zone accept to learn step up your game learn new technologies they say if everyone in the room is thinking the same way there's something wrong because we should not always use the same ideas we have been using our grandfathers our great grandfathers have used the same skills and we are uh, african countries most of us are net Im importers of food we we buy food from other countries more than we export so for the food security we have to change our ways of farming from rain fed to such technologies like hydroponics which does not uh, depend on the rain and the last one is we need to uh, sensitize our farmers help them learn about economies of scale help them learn about new uh, basic business skills demand and supply why we why are we producing the same same products and reaching the market at the same time the prices drop and we do not get value for our commodities we need to teach our farmers how to do, do va value addition there are many products you can do with uh, cassava but most of us are just satisfied with boiling or frying them and making pot uh, crisps so i think those are my recommendations can the hydroponic technology be established in any ecological zone i think uh, we can establish the project anywhere uh, those countries in the desert have shown us that the sky is not the limit we can do it if you go to israel that country uh, has dairy farming one of the best dairy farmers uh, are in uh, uh, some of the best dairy farmers are in israel people are doing dairy in a desert how are they feeding those cows in a desert people are, are doing uh, farming in very uh, bad weather conditions and you realize that necessity is the mother of invention these people never had the best and they made most use of the little that they had so i think nigeria is blessed even though we receive rain a lot of rainfall we have uh, quite some land remaining i think the population is increasing we need to start thinking uh, nigeria is not expanding but the population is expanding and soon we need to come up with new ways of doing things and so there is nowhere in this continent that you cannot do hydroponics because you can actually 
uh, automate everything. You can have all the conditions you need in hydroponics. And therefore, any ecological zone can work. Thank you very much. That was Mr. Samuel Umbuaga Muchai of Grand Tour Africa Limited, Nairobi, Kenya. With that, we have come to the end of today's edition of the program, Agri Panorama. Join us again next week, same time, same station, with another interesting package of the program. For more information and inquiries, call us on 080 or through our email on director at naerls.gov.ng or visit our website on www dot n e e r l s dot gov dot n g on behalf of the management our colleague Marika Habila and the media crew in the studio I Ablazis Haruna is saying goodbye <laughs>